Most high Christ bless. Ha! Order, order, nation in order, my house in order. Who the prophets on the corner? What's that about? They say the Bible just for me, I gotta check it out. You scoffers ain't ready for me, I'm finna bring it out. My house is in order, my people, I can teach them now. Who the prophets on the corner? What's that about? They say the Bible just for me, I gotta check it out. You scoffers ain't ready for me, I'm finna bring it out. My house is in order, my people, I can teach them now. He leading captivity, shall go in captivity. Go ahead, go ahead. Hey, uh, what's your name again? Kevin. Kevin. And what's your wife's name, if you don't mind Isabella. me asking? Isabella. Isabella. So y'all already know who y'all are in the Bible. That's a beautiful thing. I want to show y'all something heavy. Go to uh, Jeremiah 17, verse 4. Right. Because what we have here, y'all are a married couple. And that's the inspiration to our community because a lot of our people, they don't believe in marriage. Right. Right. They don't believe, they believe that once I get my rocks off with an individual, I'm able to move forward and find me whoever I want to be able to find what to lay with. Right. But it's a beautiful thing that y'all are in marriage. And what I, wa I want to do is I want to exhort y'all. And then also too, I see that y'all have the Bible. Y'all trying to include that within y'all life. Right. That's a beautiful thing. No, and I want to make sure. That's the foundation. That's right. Our life. And I want to make sure as y'all understand that Bible, y'all understand it with the correct mind frame. Right. And I want to educate. I, I want to show the sister something Reiterate. that we make a reference right there. Reiterate. Reiterate. You're right. You're in the spirit. Watch this. I'm read this. Spirit, Doodle. Hey. Matter of fact, y'all might do me a favor. Just step a little close over here. Just a little close over here. We your brothers, so trust me, there ain't nothing else going on outside of edification. I, I, I kind of feel, I, I mean, we talking to them, man, I'm in the Bible. We talking to you too, bro. Right. So we, hey, everybody we needs this word. Even I, the scripture says this Bible is a two-edged sword. Right. right. As the edification comes out, not only am I edifying you, but also to edify myself. Right. Because right. I want to talk about marriage. And as I talk about marriage, guess what? I'm going to be talking about the things that even myself, I need to make sure I'm rehearsing in this wall. Right. right. Now watch this, read. Jeremiah chapter 17. Verse 4, and thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage. So, the reason why I read this is because God said that us as the children of Israel, we would discontinue. What does that mean, discontinue? Right, no more. We would stop. We would discontinue from our heritage. Read. That I gave thee. So, what I want to ask you is, what's the heritage that God gave to the 12 tribes of Israel and only them. What's the heritage he gave to them? Kevin? The heritage. So you know the heritage? No. Okay, me. awesome. So we're about to show you in the scriptures right. what the heritage is and it's very important because the Lord said we discontinue from it. When you understand all of us as a nation of people, we discontinue from the value of what God wanted to esteem on this earth. Right. We discontinue from that. We supposed to be the light of this world. Right. But then when you look at us, we in poverty. Uh, the mind frame of our people, yeah, we in captivity and the mind frame of our people is only fashioned based off of the captivity state of what our oppressors done to us. Right. Everything that we say and we gurgitate, we say it based off of how we was raised. Our parents, they only tell you what they think is best, but everything that they think is being fashioned from our oppressors. Right. So that's why we got to go to these scriptures and we got to be able to understand the importance of the heritage of God. Read. Sirach chapter 17, verse 11. Beside this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for inheritance. So what's the heritage that God gave to us? It said it right there. The law and the life. You want me to read it for you again? Read it again. Read it again, and I'm going to read it again. And I want you to listen closely, and I want you to tell me what God said he gave to us as a heritage. Read. Right. Sirach, chapter 17, verse 11. Bring it out. Besides this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for inheritance. So what did he give to knowledge us for inheritance? Law life. The law of life the law and, and, and life. knowledge. It's all the same thing. It's all the same thing, right? So, we discontinue from everything that this Bible stemmed dealing with our heritage. We don't understand God's laws anymore. Right. And I'll show you a perfect example. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 11 and 1. Right. I'm going to show you a perfect example as far as even dealing with the spiritual aspect of how God wants us to be. And I'm going to show you how your wife, she's in the spirit. She might not know it, but she's in the spirit dealing with what we're about to read right here. And I'm going to show you things that we need to change. And it's all in honor of our God in Christ. Right. Now watch this, read. 
1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Remember, God said we discontinue from our heritage. Let's see one of the things that because of us discontinuing, we don't have the knowledge of that we need to return back to. And I'm right. going to show you the spiritual aspect of that. Right. This whole Bible is redundant and everything is say is very important for us to be able to hearken to it. Right. Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Uh -huh. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. So first and foremost, you have Paul right here speaking to the church in Corinthians. And he said, as he follows Christ, the men and the women, the, the women and men that he's given the understanding to, they need to make sure they're following him. Because the examples that he's doing is based off of the Christ teaching. Right. So when you're doing the teachings based off of that, you're following Christ's example as well. Right. So be ye follower of me, even as I am of Christ. Read. Verse 2. Now, now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things. So. Paul is saying he prays you that you remember him and all things because Paul laid down the foundation for the churches. Read. And keep the ordinance as I delivered them to you. So he said keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Right now you're about to get an ordinance that he's going to deliver to the church of Corinth. Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. Read out. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So, he's saying in a spiritual aspect, the head of every man is Christ. Right. So what does that mean for you? Who is your head? Because why? You're the man. So your head is Christ. What does that mean? That means as Christ walked in everything that he taught, you need to have the mind frame of your head, which is Christ. Right. right. Everything that he laid down, you got to be the example and you got to follow that. Right. You should embed show your knowledge and your understanding with everything in this Bible to do with Christ because he come in the volume of this book. Right. And you're supposed to be walking these examples. Right. 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 That's you honoring your head as Christ. Now right. watch this. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. So now... Christ, I mean, Paul is giving an understanding of the order between a man and a woman. The head of the woman is who? The man. The man. And it's not, Christ. And it's not every man on this earth. That's right. Just like, say, for instance, you, your, your head is not me. Your head is not him. Your head is not any of us men here. Your head me. is your husband. Right. He's supposed to be the provider for you as far as taking care of the household and feeding your spirit with wisdom and understanding. That's right. right. This should be who you should go to for knowledge. Right. But then guess what? That's a big role for you. Right. Just how, matter of fact, get, uh, what is that? Ephesians or the Colossians? Ephesians. How Christ dealt with the church. Five. 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 Let's get Ephesians. Yeah, that's right. Ephesians 5.22, I think it is. Right. Watch this. I'm going to show you how you're supposed to be dealing with your wife. Right. Just the way Christ dealt with his... The Christ dealt with the church is symbolic for how you're supposed to be dealing with your wife. Right. You can't wife just, you're supposed to love her, love the church. but then guess what? You're going to see that Christ didn't deal with the church, but in one particular way. Right. And you're about to see that now, read. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Oh. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. So, the way you're supposed to love your wife is the same exact way how Christ loved the church. Right. And when you understand as Christ walked through this earth, guess what? He did nothing but healing people, giving people a better understanding on these scriptures. Right. Forgive. And, and, and for, tell it, explaining them about how to forgive, so forth and so on, and nourishing the church. That way they can be appropriate for how to serve the Lord correctly. Right. Right? Read. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Uh -huh. Husbands, love your wives. Uh -huh. Even as Christ also loved the church and, did what? and gave himself for it. So you have to love your wife so much that you have to make sacrifices to where making sure your wife and your whole household is taken care of. That's right. That's right. Even if it comes to the point where you have to lose your life, that's how much you got to love your wife. Right. And you can't have that emotional feeling towards any other, per any other woman on this earth because this is the portion that God gave to you. Right. Free. Verse 26. Uh -huh. That he might that he might sanctify it. So Christ, he sanctified the church. Read. That he might sanctify and cleanse it. And cleanse it. With the washing of the water by the word. So what does that mean? He made sure that as he taught the church, he cleansed their mind of all the filth of the world right. to make sure they understand the proper roles and how to be able to navigate in this Bible. Right. So guess what, but that starts with you. Go right. back to 1 Corinthians 11 and 3, and then we're going to go to uh, 2 Ezra chapter 14. Right. Read. 
1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Because I'm going to tell you something, bro. The Lord has a huge role for you. Right. He didn't give you this knowledge just to be in your home reading it. He didn't give you this knowledge just to go out and talk to people about it. Right. But he gave you this knowledge for you to be able to be a light by your actions that other might see you, and then that's when they want to glorify God by doing exactly what you do. Bring it up. That's being you a follower of Paul, just like how Paul followed Christ. Read. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Bring it out. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So when you understand Christ, he himself, when a young man came up to him and said, how can I get the kingdom of heaven? He said, good master, how can I get the kingdom? And what Christ said is, hey, there's only one good. That's God. That's not me. Right. So he, he gave all glory and honor to God. Right. Why? Because he knew that only through God he was able to do the miracles that he was able to do. Right. So the reason why he was born with the Holy Ghost is because God allowed that to happen. Right. That's, why, that's why Christ always gave glory to God, and that's his reverence. That's his head. Right. So as God... As Christ learns everything and do everything of the will of his Father, same way how the man is supposed to do everything in the will of Christ. That's right. And the same way how the woman is supposed to do everything in the will of her head, which is you. Right. You understand what I'm saying? And everything you teach your wife, she's going to make sure to teach her kids. Right. So then guess what? Your kids are going to have your mind frame because your right. wife is teaching your mind right. to your children. Right. On one accord. That's exactly how God designed Everything. That's what a nation is about. Right. right. That's the reason why our people don't have the appropriate nation they're supposed to have because they're not under the simplicity of marriage and order in the household. That's right. right. Keep going. First, first Corinthians chapter right. eleven, verse four. Uh, Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So, Kevin, this is where our mind frame are going to start to have to change. And it's going to be, it's going to show forth in our actions that we're changing our mind frame based off of these scriptures. You understand right. what I'm saying? So I want you to listen to this, this scripture closely. And I want you to tell me what do you think you're doing wrong based off of the scripture that we're reading. All right? Read it again. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. And we're going to, we're going to read it all the way through because we're going to show you what your wife is doing right and then what you what need she, to fix. What she reading? Read it again. I mean, call it out again. Hey, brothers, I want y'all to know something. We are here to be able to show our people who they are according to the Bible because for so long, we've been lost to our heritage. And we must return back to it. God is looking for men that's willing to stand up for his nation. So if you want to stand up for your nation, this is the place to be. Bring it up. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. Bring it up. Verse 5, excuse me. No, I'm sorry. Verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying. So the scripture says every man praying or prophesying. What does it mean to prophesy? That means you're teaching this Bible or you hear this Bible as it's being taught to you. Right. Prophesying. Every man praying or prophesying. Read. Having his head covered. Having his head covered. Read. Dishonoreth his head. He dishonored his head, which is the head of the men is Christ. Right. So, Kevin, what are you doing wrong as uh, I just a read head that? Hat or veil dishonoring your head. So, what's happening with you right now? I got a hat on. That's exactly right. So then, as a form of repentance, to, in order to be able to follow the scriptures as it is written, what would you do at this moment? If I'm praying or prophesying, I Correct. can't have my I can't have a hat. That's right. right. Let's get his brother hand clap. So. You put it back on, because guess what we're doing right now? Yeah, 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 you're right. You're there right. you go. You're right, you're right. That's the form of changing. Yeah, you're right, you're and I don't want this to happen just when we're here. Anytime you're reading this Bible, matter of fact, your Revelation is 1 and 3. Bring it up. Anytime you hear this Bible, you as the male of the household, you got to make sure that every man in your house got their head uncovered. Right. Just like when we go into the courtroom, the so-called white man, they want us to humble ourselves to them. And how do they do that? Yeah. All rise and take your hats off. Right. You see what I'm saying? But they got that from this Bible, That's how right. God wants the men to operate. Right. Right. So right. you, as a man of your household, make sure as you're reading these scriptures that you take all hats off. Right. But then guess what? For the woman, we're going to go back and read it on how they're supposed to fulfill their role, which your wife is already doing. Right. Read. Revelation chapter 1, verse 3. Bring it out. Go ahead. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein. So that's why the scripture says, blessed is he that read it 
in those that hear the words of this prophecy. So that's why as the scriptures coming out, prophecies happen. Right. Things are happening to reveal to you the understanding of why we're in a predicament we're in now. Right. What's going to happen in the last days before Christ come on the scene? Right. When Christ does come on the scene, what will happen? Who will he save? That's what this Bible is about. This book is a book of prophecy. Right. right. Now, go back to 1 Corinthians uh, 3 and 5. I mean, 11 and 5, and then we're going to go to 2nd uh, Edges. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 5. Bring it out. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. So, the, the Lord said for the men, as they read in these scriptures and as they hear the word to this prophecy coming out, they have to make sure they had that that spirit of fear on them to where they immediately take their hat off to reverence their father. Right. Just like dealing with the women, every time this Bible come out, they have to make sure that they have their heads covered right. so that they can honor their husband, which is the head of them. Right. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And this is something that I don't want y'all to just listen to today right. and then y'all forget about this in the future. Right. Keep that matter of fact, if I was you, I would even highlight that. Try to remember that priest up. That way the Lord can see that you really want to have that humility right. to reverence in him every time the scripture's coming out, you fulfilling your proper role. Right. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Before I move forward, did y'all have any questions? All right, go ahead and read that. I don't want you to think about scriptural questions that y'all might have. Because we're not out here just to be uh, teachers and let you sit there and listen. Right. We also, too, want to make sure the minds of y'all are cleansed up. Right. Because there may be things in the world that cause contradiction or confusion with this Bible. Right. As an example, knowing who the Israelites are and who, the, who Paul said the Gentiles are. Right. See what I'm saying? There's a lot of things in this Bible that Christianity and all these different religions has confused us right. on. So what we need to make sure it's clear. Right. Free. You know what I'm looking for, right? Second Ezra, chapter 14, verse 13. Bring it out. Now, therefore, set thine house in order. So, Kevin, I want you to understand something. This specific precept is dealing directly with you right now. Right. So listen closely to what it's saying again. Read it again. Second Ezra, chapter 14, verse 13. Uh -huh. Now, therefore, set thine house in order. So, God is commanding you to be able to set your household in order. And how do you do that? You do that based off of the wisdom of these scriptures. Right. Making sure that you're doing a job of being a proper leader in your household, feeding your spirit with wisdom so that you can be able to translate that to your wife. Right. So that she can be able to translate that to her children, to your right. children. You understand what I'm saying? So I encourage you, make sure you're applying what this scripture is saying. All scriptures that I'm reading, make sure you're really taking heed to it because it's for your life and for your household life. Breathe. And reprove thy people. And once you're able to get your household established, the Lord has commanded for you to be able to come out to the highways and byways and do the exact same thing we're doing. Right. That's why I say the Lord don't want you just to be in your house watching YouTube videos all day and gaining knowledge, but then there's nothing you're doing with it. Right. He wants you to be able to go out and then give everybody else the understanding that you have because this is valuable. Right. And the word of this Bible says that when it comes to the last days, the way that it ends is by this gospel being preached throughout the whole entire world. That's right. That's how you know Christianity is a false religion because Christianity is all over the place. Bring it but up. yet the end is not here yet. Right. So right. that scripture isn't being fulfilled through that religion. Right. It's because our people do not know who they are. You understand what I'm saying? Matter of fact, keep going, keep going, keep going. Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 13. Uh -huh. Now therefore, set thine house in order and reprove thy people. Comfort such of them as be in trouble. And how do you know that this Bible is written to the black man? It's because everywhere we go, you got people trying to aim at us, shoot us down in the streets. Right. They quick to call the cops on us. Right. We're so paranoid walking through this, uh, walking through through America, wherever you want to call it, Houston, wherever we at, to the point to where if we see a cop, even if the cop hasn't pulled us over yet, we have some type of fear in our spirit that they don't do it. Right. That show you that we're in trouble. That right. show you that we're not at a place of rest. Right. That show you that we're looking for something to give us that comfort. And this whole time it's been sitting on your bookshelf, which is this Bible. Right. Because the more you start to read this Bible, the more comfort you start to have within your spirit because you know that you're the chosen people of God now and you know that he's going to save you in the last days. As right. right. long as you do what's right, of course. That's right. He's not looking for no Negro or somebody that calls himself African American to be, to, to be caught up in the chariot. Right. right. He got, you got to make sure you know you're from the tribe of Judah, right. tribe right. of Benjamin, right. tribe of Levi, right. tribe Bring of Ephraim, right. tribe of Manasseh. Right. All 12 tribes that you see on this side, that's who Christ came for and that's it. Right. Nobody else. Say it again. That's, it. That's right. Now read it. Keep going. 
and now renounce corruption. Uh -huh. Verse 14, uh -huh. let go from the mortal thoughts. When the scripture says let go from the mortal thoughts, that goes into any, any, any sense of worry that's in your mind frame that prohibits you from doing what the commandments say do. Right. What about my family? Or what about going to work? I got to dress like this at my job? What about this and that? That's a mortal thought. Right. The Lord wants us to let go of these things and he wants us to just serve him. Right. That's simple. Just to serve him. Read. Cast away the burdens of man. He said cast away, meaning to throw away the burdens of man. Don't care about anything outside of serving God. Because once you start to serve God correctly with wisdom, then guess what? The Lord will make it easy for your life to navigate. Right. Why? Because he's only afflicting us because we're not doing what he say do. Right. So once we start to do what he say do, then we go understand it. All alone, the reason why I've been going through all this tribulation in my life is because I wasn't serving God correctly. Right. right. We got to be able to really see that. Read. Put off now the weak nature. Right, right, right. So now he says put off the weak nature. So I want to deal with something because I want to slowly start to convert our minds to doing what these scriptures say do. Right. What about that? What about it? Can he read? We'll read it for you. We'll read it for you. But then we're going to go right back to my topic, all right? Yeah. Go ahead and read that. Revelations 2 and 9. Because I like that scripture. That's a good scripture. Yeah, it is. That's a good scripture. Watch this. Is any reason why you want us to read it? Yeah, you was just elaborating on the worry. Okay, I see what you're saying. I do. I see what you're saying. Let's read it real quick. Revelations chapter 2, verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation. So you're right. The Most High God, he knows our work. He knows how we try to wake up in the morning and provide for our family. And he knows the tribulation as far as we might, we don't know if we might get fired from our job. How are we going to get the next paycheck to come in to be able to take care of the bills and make sure we got sufficient food? Right. He knows the tribulation that we're at. Read. And poverty. And the poverty. Us being in a poor state. Because this world don't want to have nothing to do with us. They, they make sure that if we do get a job, it's to sustain the system that they created so right. for them to benefit from. Right. That's why we're working all these minimum wage jobs. That's why we're at the bottom. That's why when it comes to the place of our environment where we stay at, it's known as the ghetto. But when you understand, if you look up the word ghetto, it just means a place where the Jews was forced to dwell at. Right. So that's only showing you the same thing that happened in Europe is the same thing that's happening here. And we the Jews. That's all that's telling you. That's free. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. What does he mean when he say, but we're rich? There you go. We're rich in glory. We're rich in spirit. Why? Because all the covenant, all the glory, all the promises, that was given to only our seed. That's and right. at the end of days, we're going to be the one with the Messiah to inherit this earth. That's, That's right. right. If we do what's right. That's Read. Right. And I know the blasphemy. Blasphemy is just another word for a, a filthy lie. Read. Filthy lie. Of them which say they are Jews and are not. Because you have the ones that's in Jerusalem now. They state that they're the Jews. They try to take up hold to the culture. Right? But then guess what? Everything that they're doing is a filthy lie because right. they're not the real Jews. Right. They stole our heritage. Right. They stole right. our culture. That's why they can't do it right. Bring it up. Second most skin cancer rate. There you in go. In the world. And you you, you in the spirit in with Australia, that? Australia. Right. It's number one. You in the spirit with that? Because I was going to bring that they out. They don't belong there. There you go. <laughs> right. You got it. You got it. <laughs> you in the spirit. He missed ten. Let's keep going. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Now, I want to show you something. Yes. How do we know that we're the Jews and then that they're not? How do I know? Right. Oh, uh, Matthew 10 and 5. You, you quoted that earlier. I think we read that earlier for you. You read that earlier. Did he? But I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you how we know that we're the Jews and they're not. Bring it out. Get, uh, what is this? 2nd Ezra 3. And 33, I think it is, right? Second Ezra, chapter 3, yeah. verse 36. That's cool, that's cool. Thou shalt find that Israel uh -huh. by name. Thou shalt find what? Thou shalt find that Israel uh -huh. by name. By name. Hath keep, have kept thy precepts. Uh-huh, that's it. But not the heathen. So, the scripture says, you have found that Israel by name have kept thy precepts. Right. Now, this is how you prove the difference between us and the heathen. The heathen, they won't believe nothing this Bible say do. Right. And I'll give you an example. Let's get Numbers 15 and 38. Bring it up. And then we'll get Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Right. I'm going to show you how by name 
the children of Israel have hearkened and kept the commandments of God, but the heathen won't. Right. Three. Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel. Because remember, Ezra said that by name, the children of Israel. What, children, what Israel means is someone who has power with God. Right. Right. A prince or a princess that has power with God. And right. the way we have power with God is by keeping the commandments. That's right. So watch one of the powers, of, uh, watch one of the ways we can obtain the power of God by keeping this commandment. Numbers 15, 38, read. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. So, Kevin, do you know what fringes is? No. So I want you to look at all these brothers' shirts. Oh, okay. At the bottom yeah. of it, those are what you call fringes. Right. So remember, the scripture says, speak unto the children of Israel, only them. Speak unto them and bid them, meaning make them wear fringes in the borders of all their garments. Is that something that you have established in your household? Is that something you think you need to get established in your household? I mean, yeah, I, I, I want to get away from the vanity. Uh-huh. You know, the, uh, the fashionism. Right, right. But and things like that. So, to hearken to this, is that something that you're able to do? That's what I'm asking. Oh, yeah, yeah, that'll save me some money. <laughs> so, check this out. Hey, I understand why you say that. That's, that's wisdom. Right. But check this out. He says, speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make fringes. How long? Read. Fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generation. So, as we come back to the heritage of this Bible and who we are, you got to make sure that on all your shirts, it's going to be one slow process at a time, but you want to start to put fringes with a border of blue on all your shirts. Right. right. And for your daughters, if you got daughters, put them on all their dresses. Yeah, and we're going to get to their dresses long, in a minute. Huh? huh? Long on my daughter. Yeah, they don't have to be so long. It's up to you. You can have them like that if you right. want to. We call them Pharisee fringes. That's what right. we call them. But uh, watch this. Keep going. And, th and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So when you look at all these fringes, he got a ribbon of blue and he got fringes around it, right? Or he got, he got fringes with a ribbon of blue around it. Fringes with a ribbon of blue around it. The fringes are on the outside. I mean, the, the border of blue is on the outside, above the fringes, right? Read. Verse 39, uh -huh. and, it, and it shall be unto you for a fringe. And these fringes shall be unto us for fringes that what? That ye may look upon it uh -huh. and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. So the reason why these fringes are supposed to be on our shirts is because throughout this world, we're going to be tempted by the different fashions of this world. What do I mean by that? Smoking cigarettes, smoking weed. As you go through, as soon as you leave from outside your house, you're probably going to have somebody on the stairs smoking a cigarette. And then if that's something that you might have a problem with, the Lord forbade us not to do it, and you might be tempted to want to do it. But you have fringes on your shirt, guess what? You're going to look down, and you gotta, you're going to say to yourself, damn, I remember. i got to keep the commandments of God. I'm right. an Israelite. Right. You see what I'm saying? That's the importance of these fringes. Right. It's to keep you in line with following commandments as it is written. Right. right. Whenever you have these fringes on, it's a reminder to fear God and right. no one else. Right. Teach, huh? right? So this is one of the things to separate us from those fake Jews over there. Because they don't have fringes that go all the way around their borders. Right. They have what you know as tassels. Right. And they misunderstand the scriptures because they put on the four corners. And the four corners is actually making reference to all around. But they just got tassels going down the, uh, to the left front, the fr uh, back front, the left, I mean the right front and the right back. You see what I'm saying? They just got little strings going down the corners, but really it's supposed to be all the way around. Right. That's the understanding oh, behind that scripture. Right. And this is something that if y'all y'all not doing it, y'all want to try to make haste to do these things. This is to be able to show, after us been in captivity for so long, and understanding now what we've done wrong with God, we got to try our best to strive to do what's right with God and get back on his good side. Right. Now they will see the
walking around saying that I'm a black man. I ain't saying that no more. It's our man. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.